generation made the more choice. Dot com, the Republican candidate I did for not governor. have sexual relations with our clients. This is something we will be able to solve our problems if we get distracted by sideshows and carnival barbers. One Republican, one Democrat, and you discuss the issues that matter in today's local, state, national, and global politics. Hosted by Steve Hickson with co-hosts John Stanberry and Franklin Chansey. This is Backfire. All right, another beautiful day in San Fran, Cleveland, Tennessee. Welcome to, back to another edition of Backfire. Good morning. With Franklin Chansey and John Stanberry and, of course, myself, Steve Dobal. And our chief engineer, Daniel Brentley. <laughs> oh, Lordy, I tell you, I've been gone just about all week. I hadn't. I, the there's newspaper. starting to be a pattern here, I've noticed. I haven't during read the summer. paper, yeah. haven't looked at news. It's just wonderful. This guy comes in on, on Wednesdays unshaven, clothes all <laughs> rumpled up. River mud on his in his his flip flops. Well, the fish are biting right now. Yeah, uh -huh. well, maybe not today. <laughs> I don't know. They you like what it. happened yesterday? What? No, yesterday afternoon. Oh, what kind of spill was that? Uh, four th uh, eight thousand gallons of gas and four thousand gallons of diesel. In the Ogoe Ogoe River. River. Oh, uh, where did it go in? Uh, yeah, but you, it doesn't matter. It's coming down to you at the yeah, lake. Uh, I don't know how much time I got. Well. It, I think on the upper portion of it. Yeah. Uh, eventually, it makes its way down because the the flume's out of service right now, so they can't stop. That water run down there; it'll be gone quicker. They had, uh, well, yeah, but where's it going? It's going down to the Hawassi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll get down. To, hey, they'll clean it up down there about Olin. <laughs> uh, well, they're. Um, couldn't you on the lake? Couldn't you just set it on fire? You can ring that stuff uh, in on well, the water surface. Well, they are surface. doing that. There are booms up there, and they're trying to get to it. The, yesterday, they were trying to get to it to pump out. See, I've never understood that when they pump it. Just light the thing on fire. Ring it in out in the middle of the lake and set it on fire. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure it works. Well, probably way. not in America with the EPA. It, but, it, but, yeah. it may work that way with the diesel. I'm not yeah. so sure about the gasoline. Well, yeah, they have. So, <clears throat> given that there's a, um, there's a large. Fish fry. <laughs> That there's a large tanker truck there with, with thousands and thousands of more gallons in it, perhaps setting a fire at the moment. Uh, yeah, get idea. that cleaned up first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Monday they had the TVA partners up there to celebrate their new agreement, where the the rafting people are paying the TVA to raft. So, yeah, and then, uh, then they had the uh, spill. So. Anyway, we'll see what happens. I better get back up there and check and see what's going on. But that was the spill. The fishing, the fishing the just getting... And by the way, in case you were traveling, I mean, as of last evening, 64 was completely shut down. You know, that is really, when they had that rock slide, that is really, really tough on the people that live up there because there is no alternative yeah, outside of miles and miles and miles. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. So is this still talking. up in the rafting area? No, it's above that. It appeared, it appeared to be in the, uh, from the picture I saw, it appeared to be in the uh, uh, smoother portion of the water up there. So, but, it, but it made it sound like it was farther upriver. Mm. I mm. think it probably uh, ahead of the, uh, the put-in for the raft. They could, they could get rid of that if they just quit letting those trucks on, those, on that highway. Yeah, but there's no alternative. I mean, you know, the highway is the highway. Highway 40. Huh? They can go Highway 40 and go around. I, I know. Oh, well, anyway. Um, Has this ever happened before? Well, there have been lots, of, uh, lots, of, lots of vehicles that have gone over there. I don't remember specifically a tanker truck, a fully loaded one on top of it. Anything else y'all want to talk about? You were talking about... Uh, 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 you just got started. Oh, I know. <laughs> we talked about... Are you Jim petered Gobble. out already? I'm tired already. See you next week. <laughs> The, uh, Tim Gobbles uh, in the headlines in the Chattanooga Times this morning. He's uh, w made the top three of the FBI pick for the state T of Tennessee. Tennessee Bureau of Investigations. TBI, okay. Yeah. Head of the TBI. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The Knoxville Police Chief and the Deputy Director of the current Deputy Director of the TBI are the three finalists. Hmm. Out of, uh, well, it was 10. Oh, but there were more than that before that. Yeah, but I mean, they had gotten down to ten, and now he's made the cut to the 
to the final three. So that uh, two uh, two state representatives uh, in this area have uh, decided to back Randy Boyd for governor. Who's that? Uh, Gerald McCormick from Chattanooga and Ron Travis from Dayton. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I want to stay on the local just a little bit. The sale of the Goal Academy site okayed. Who did they sell it to, or what are they doing? Do you may know? Um, yeah, I've, I've had a few discussions with some people about that. That That's a little troublesome, for me at least. Um, we don't know who it's. It's not sold, apparently. But apparently the board took a vote to authorize negotiations with one person. A lot of us think, and, and, and when I say us, there's interest in the city government, there's interest in the county government, that this is not in keeping with the way the sale is supposed to be done by the law. You know, we're, Shouldn't it be put out for bid? Well, that's what we th thought, to be perfectly honest. But apparently there is uh, a separate uh, statute that addresses school boards, and it says that they can do a negotiated sale. But it also requires public notice. And to be perfectly honest, their attorney is telling them that because they listed it with a realtor, that that's public notice. But the statute's actually pretty clear about what public notice is. It's a legal notice running the paper. Uh, it defines that pretty uh, clearly. The other problem is, to be honest, later yesterday I was doing a little more research, and there's actually another stipulation from CTAS on the, the law is actually, uh, if I can remember it, Anyway, 2006 is the last number in the Tennessee Code annotated that they're referring to. I believe it's 49-6-2006. But there's also a stipulation in there that that only applies if the county in question is managed under the Financial Management Act of 1981. And what's interesting about that is when Lisa was a commissioner, she actually tried to get the county to convert to the Financial Management Act of 1981. And the school system was actually the biggest uh, complainer about not wanting to go to that act. Well, if you're not under the Financial Management Act of 81, you're under 57. And apparently we're sort of under a hybrid of 57. You have to use the old way, and the old way requires sealed bids. So there's a lot of speculation and talk going on about that. Well, you know, they have a, evidently, I was, someone told me this property's been for sale for a year. Well, the problem is the price was too high by most people that looked at it, and that's another problem so with have, the notice they, part. Did they put it out with a price on it? Uh, they, they gave a price, but we don't know what this sale is for. So we don't know if this is a lower price that they've accepted. You know, the whole point of a sealed bid process is everybody turns a bid in. If you're a minute late, your bid's not accepted. And then all of those bids are opened at the same time in a public forum so everybody can see them being open. And then the school board can decide which bid they take. With this, for example, uh, the comment was made, well, well, if you're interested, make a bid. Well, what are you bidding on? Because they've also asked for a PUD de designation from the city council uh, or from the zoning people uh, to change the zoning. Well, how do you bid on a piece of property if you don't know whether it's an R2, an R3? Uh, you know, what's the zone going to be? And by the way, while we're on that, uh, for my opinion at least, a PUD is nothing but a, a spineless way for a government bureaucracy to basically cram something down a neighborhood's throat. Because what a PUD basically says is we're not going to tell you what we're asking for. We're going to get all our approvals, and then when we decide, we're going to spring it on you, and it's basically too late at that point. So my question would be, why are you asking for a PUD? If you want to build an apartment building there, ask for R3. You know, now, right now it's R2, which means it could be uh, you could build con uh, condominiums or uh, cluster zoning ha uh, houses on it. You could build duplexes on it. You can't build an apartment building. Now, that's a almost exclusively uh, R1 neighborhood. I don't, there, there's some duplexes around, but most of the houses around that are single-owner houses. That road is terribly curvy, terribly difficult to that's navigate. That's the road I've always thought the city should have taken, straightened, and widened and made a cut through. Well, here's the problem. when you If you do, especially... If you end up, I've actually heard that there's interest out of Chattanooga in going commercial there. 
you go commercial on that road, you're going to be condemning houses to straighten that road. You know, the city will have to condemn houses, straighten the road. Uh, so there's a lot involved in this, and the school board, quite frankly, seems to be, I know they need the money, you know, for this uh, American Uniform project that they're mm -hmm. doing, uh, but there's a public trust here, too, to the communities impacted by these things. I just can't imagine um, taking bids on this thing and and not putting them out to the public. I mean, well, the attorney yesterday I the, talked to was very that, clear. He he chastised me for using the word bids. The ad identity of the would be buyer and the price being discussed have not yet been publicly disclosed. Well, see, that's the problem. How do you have a public disclosure, and how do you generate more? interest if people don't know what the actual price is. Now, they set a price a while back that was, I think it was over $900,000 for it. And it valued the building. The problem is most people consider the building an actual mm. detriment rather than an asset. Well, I'm sure that building will be taken out. Well, see, that's the problem. You can't value a building into the value of the property if if it's going to have to be torn down. It's actually a negative on the property. A PUD, if I'm not mistaken, Mistaken. A PUD is a design. No, it's a PUD stands for planned urban development. It's a plan. It's a it's a design. But the public doesn't know. The public won't know until it's already done. That's what I don't like about them. Why don't you just tell me you're going to build an apartment building? And in the interest of disclosure, we, we had actually we live right over there. Uh, we have some property that we thought would be more valuable to the school board. We uh, did approach them about a trade, and they weren't interested. So uh, that's full disclosure. Well, they need cash, I'd say. I guess. For that uh, new project. I can't imagine why the city doesn't get involved with that uh, with that project on the American uniform. I don't either. Now, I will say, you know, the, the I asked, they presented at Rotary Club a few weeks ago, and I asked publicly uh, the, the county, and I did it. I knew what the answer was, and I really wanted to give them an opportunity, and they said that, uh, they have reached out to the city and and said we'd love to you know go in on this as a joint venture and the city has rejected that overture. So the county's you know, the school board has tried to make that happen and apparently the city's not interested. You know, <clears throat> I'm sitting here just thinking about you know if if I was an interested party in that property, where I mean how would I have known where it was advertised to be uh, 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 well sold? That that, that's, you know, this, it's a school. That's been a well, lot of people. If you rode question. by there every day, how would you know it was for sale? Well, they put a sign on it. You know, I'll be honest with you. I've never seen a government entity use a a real estate company to, and and it's been pulled from the real estate company now as well. Uh, so they don't represent it anymore. So there was a commission being paid for this. I, I don't know. Uh, at one point, I was told that was being donated. You know, that's the problem with this. Nobody really knows. And the whole point of these laws is to make sure that there's transparency and everybody in the public knows what's going on. On top of the fact that, I mean, I'd ask you, any of you three in the room, how good are you going to do in an auction with only one person in the room? Probably not going to be a whole lot of back and forth on the price. Mm-hmm. So, to me, I don't understand why you wouldn't want more uh, Had the coverage. property been appraised? Uh, I don't remember what the appraisal is. Are they using tax appraisal? Well, the problem is the appraisal would also value the building as well. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> but I do think it will be interesting because the thing that I found last night, yesterday afternoon, about the 1981 Financial Management Act is interesting because that actually shifts it out of uh, 49-6-2006 and puts it into the old uh, law, which requires sealed bid process and full disclosure. And so you want a sealed bid? I don't, you know, at this point, I'm tired of talking to people. I, I just think it looks... I just don't think it looks good. I know they want, they need money, and they, and that's a good thing because they want to do a, a good project over there for the kids. But I just think sometimes we get in a hurry and and corners get uh, uh, missed, turns get missed. Well, <clears throat> I don't know what, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what's going on, but it just seems a little strange to me that this thing's coming up and the the identity of the buyer and the price being discussed have not yet been publicly disclosed. Just that that paragraph doesn't even sound right in this article in the banner. 
uh, you know, I, I can tell you that, that a lot of people in the city, in the county, in the, the commission, the city council, uh, are, are, they just, they don't, they've never seen anything transpire like this. Well, I think one of the reasons I, I'm reading the article and looking at it a little more in depth, <clears throat> they might be trying to get a commitment to it where they can start spending some money on the new, on the pie, on the new place. Well, now that's what they want, and that's an admirable, you know, nobody's opposed to that, but, you know, if I, well, for example, I'm habitually late to this program. I really don't think if I'm going, uh, 70 miles an hour down Key Street, the officer is going to take my good intentions to be on time to the radio show as a reason that I can drive 70 miles an hour down the road. So you will. <laughs> well, there was a story, I think, in the banner this week that's uh, sure to uh, uh, get John um, awakened this Let morning. Let me guess. We're going to talk about the city. Is it? No, no, no. We're going to talk about the issue concerning the geothermal well, wells at city, Mayfield, at Mayfield and Arnold. Absolutely. Oh. I, you know what? See, what we got him? <laughs> Actually, I had that to talk about. What is a geothermal problem that we have in Cleveland? Well, one it? of the problems is the engineer I talked to years ago said the reason you don't see corporations doing geothermal in this part of the country is it doesn't really pay for itself. Now, we got into that whole discussion. The city came in and they used TVA numbers. The problem is they don't ever figure in the capital cost of installing it. And they'll go, oh, it pays for itself in eight years. I think that's what Dr. Denning said. The engineer I talked to who actually specializes in, in this for companies said that if it doesn't pay for itself in three years, you lost money. What is geothermal? Tell me what that is. They tap down to... They come uh, hundreds of hundred, feet. A couple, several hundred feet below the ground. They compact all the that moved dirt. Where the temperature is uh, steady, and then they use that temperature. It's a uh, heat sink. To move, to move air back and forth. Like now, they heat water, pump now they pump water. Yeah, they pump water in and out of it. But when you're, for example, there are hundreds of wells. Now, here, here's a new wrinkle. And if you read that article, nobody mentioned this. Who was in charge of the construction? Now they talked about the company that put these wells in. Yeah. But there's a they actually pay a company to oversee this. That would be Community Tectonics, who has taken millions of dollars out of our community for the city and the county system. The county got rid of them earlier than the city did. And I will tell you, in dealing with this, the city school board would fight you over community tectonics. They got non-competitively bid contracts for all of these projects. So they were in charge of this. And the amazing thing is they mentioned Cleveland Middle and said, oh, we've had no problems at Cleveland Middle. Yeah, except for the fact that you had to go back in and redrill the wells deeper and more because community tectonics didn't follow the specified plan there. That just happens to be years ago, so I guess they hope everybody has forgotten about that but the system there failed as well or was on the verge of failing and the school board had to almost be forced to, to go back on tectonics and get that fixed and I can tell you as a, as a parent of a student that went through Cleveland High School the system over there one room's hot one room's cold it's been a disaster over there as well now, keep in mind, Tectonics is also the company that built Blythe Bower, where the windows all rusted and the floor tiles popped up off the floor within the first year or two. Why does the city protect them so much, you think? I don't know. They got non-competitively bid contracts for years. I can tell you at, at Arnold, that's one of the sites they're talking about where it was collapsing. And they now the, the kids, you think about this, the kids can't go out on the football field now for fear that they'll collapse into a sinkhole. That, at Arnold? Yes. Let me tell you something about Arnold. Arnold, I, I've got blood over there on that field. I do too. And it was a uh, brick yard. They made the old style brick back mm -hmm. when... That's what they made there. That's why that place is so hard. Well, here was an interesting story. I think I've told this before, but we were at a meeting when they were talking about doing this. And Tectonics laid out the plan, and they showed where they were going to do this new entrance out there at Arnold, and, and eventually they are going to do the geothermal. And I put my hand up and said, do you, do you own the land? Now, I got chastised, Dr. Denning, oh, of course we own the land. Well, finally, the principal uh, kind of tugged on his sleeve and went, uh, we don't own that land. There was an agreement between the county and the city for that field. 
The county maintained it during the summer, and the city maintained it during the uh, fall, but the city school system didn't own that land. And so my only point was, here you had tectonics getting these un non-competitively bid contracts, and they design an addition and a driveway and all of this stuff on land they don't even own. So nobody even bothered to check where the the edges of the property were and what they owned and what they didn't own. So that's the level of, of uh, expertise that we paid community tectonics for. At uh, Mayfield School, if they had a sinkhole, it was probably from all the field dirt they put in. Over. No, these things are collapsing now. If you read, you know, if you read the According article, to the article, it says that they may not have been constructed correctly. Correctly, that they're but supposed to be again, sealed around the edges right. somehow, and they may not have. And so they they did say, look, we're going to go back on the company that did it. But the problem is, they have a a construction supervisor that's supposed to take care of that, and that would be community tectonics. Why were they not mentioned last night? Why didn't anybody say we're going to go back on Don Shell and community tectonics? Good question. Don't we have a commissioner coming in a minute? She doesn't have anything to do with that. That's the county. <laughs> Six one four five 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 three in the city councilman or city mayor, et cetera. Well, that wouldn't be the city council either. It would be yeah. the city school board. Any yeah. city school board, et cetera. Six one four. Now, I will five, say five, we five, asked three. a lot of questions, and there was one uh, positive move that the school board took after we asked a lot of these questions. Do you know what it was? What they said you couldn't speak at meetings without being on the agenda beforehand. Yeah. After that, so they shut off allowing questions from the floor. Uh, you know, I noticed they got approval for another school out on Georgetown Road, I call it. But uh, I don't know how many schools we can put on that road. But how, you know, right now, who picks out a site for a school? The school board's in charge of that. Why would the um, community not be involved? We have a, well, uh, we have a whole system in place to uh, see where growth is. In the com in the community, well, that, and that, that's how they should be selecting sites based upon future needs. That's presumably the case. Well, you just we, we, we assume, assume that, we the assume west that. side has had the highest growth over the last. The only, my only years. problem with the, with the, the process is that that school is less than a mile away from a county school, <laughs> and you know what you do when you do that is you you drastically alter the demographic mix of the county school. Now, if you want if you want a real issue about there uh, well, the city's grown out that way too right. but I, I would question whether or not we we're building another school in a floodplain in a or flood not. Plain. that is a flood prone area out there yeah. so that i think is something worth talking about uh, well plus the the school is apparently at the back of the development and there will be commercial development in front of it So you're going to drive through a shopping center to get to the school. Well, um, the kids will have a place to hang out after school, I guess. And I guess. <laughs> well, just like you did, right? Well, I had the sweet shop. Okay. Yeah. We had the sweet shop over at Arnold when uh -huh. I was growing up. Yeah. Either you either went and got candy or you got in a fight. That's all you had. <laughs> did that now? The, did they have refined sugar back then? They had the real deal back okay. then. I, I didn't know if sugar had been, you know, discovered yet. No, uh, they had to chop their own cane uh, to make it. They grew it in the yard. This was this was a true sweet shop. You walked in and it had red hots and had all kinds of stuff in there. <laughs> I don't know what that lady that had that street uh, sweet shop. I don't know how she made any money, but there was a lot of kids that came in there right at the end of school. I can tell you that, and some before school. Uh what else would you guys like to talk about this morning? Franklin, I'll give you the floor this morning. What do you got on your mind? Uh, well, <clears throat> we could talk about the sexually transmitted diseases in California I've got some rising. I actually have a, I have a uh, Supreme Court <laughs> case that Franklin might act. I mean, I don't have a strong, <laughs> this was a unanimous decision, and Franklin might actually be able to. Tell us a little bit more about it. Which one are we referring Fourth to? Fourth Amendment uh, case that they decided yesterday, or apparently, um, I've got it here. It'll take me a second to find it. Um, but it was on search and seizure, and it was a unanimous decision. Conservative about the passengers and, in the rental cars? Yeah, yeah the rental car mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, decision. Well, it's interesting. Um, basically, the question was, if you're a passenger riding in a rental car, do you have an expectation of privacy 
in the car. Okay. In words, can somebody else allow everything in the car to be searched uh, by the police? Uh, and the the court ruled that you could not, uh, that you did have an expectation of privacy there. And that's been the test for the, about 30, 40 years now, uh, whether your car or your telephone or the phone booth you're in or whatever, whether or not you have an expectation of privacy. If, if that's the case, then the police are supposed to get a warrant before they search you. The Supreme Court did rule in favor of privacy in that circumstance. Unanimously. They did, but interestingly enough, it appeared from that that uh, Justices Thomas and Gorsuch um, are laying the groundwork for uh, attacking that idea. They seem to, to write in their separate opinions that um, that they weren't comfortable with the concept of the of the expectation of privacy test. Well, let me ask you something. Where's this coming from? What was the what what happened to make this come up? Basically, in a rental car, and he wasn't on the agreement of the rental. Wasn't car. on the agreement. Okay, he was a passenger. In he it. was a passenger, and it, it, it now, was there were so some other problems. You know why they stopped the car? Pot. No, uh, he his hands weren't at ten and two. Okay, yeah. so the court also would. Uh, I mean, I I, yeah. I I don't not sure. Frankly, I think you're reaching to, to have something to complain about with Gorsuch. No, I'm and, happy and with Thomas. the result, but I, but that's the way these things work. They start but, to lay the groundwork for the future. Well, but the, the groundwork would be that there has to be a reasonable balance, and that may be where they're headed is towards a reasonable mm -hmm. balance. And in this case, you pull someone over for ten and two. That obviously doesn't look balance that's a pretty long stretch to pull some and then over. they wanted to search the car right what for doing what what, what? he didn't have his hands at 10 o'clock and two o'clock on the steering the wheel well why would you want to search a car because of the way someone was driving you wouldn't that's the point they use that as no an excuse to pull it over for that um uh but they nonetheless if i want to drive the car one-handed i could right. am i right right not according to the law. Well, but, there's all sorts of things, though. You know, for, for many years, I think our courts have kind of nipped this one in the bud. But for about 15 years, we had officers here that were using uh, uh, the concept of weaving between the lines yeah. as a ground for pulling people over. Finally, a court said there's no such thing as weaving between the lines. You're either between the lines or you're not. Crossing the line might be a basis for pulling it over, but not weaving between them. I'll tell you what, I've seen that uh, uh, that aggravates me. I've seen police cars get within two feet of the back of a bumper mm -hmm. and just ride somebody's tail yeah. trying to get them to do something. Yeah, there's a, there's a concept called basically blue light anxiety. And basically is you get put into being so concerned about the car behind you that eventually you weave back and forth or something, and right. that gives them the reason to pull you over. Right. I thought that they had changed <coughs> from 10 to 2 to 8 and 4 because of airbag stuff. <laughs> I, I seriously thought that. I thought it well, was a safety I, thing. I, I want to add well, something. There's no, rule, there's no law that I don't. That. I don't know where this is supposed to go, but basically, uh, I'll give you another idea that goes with it. I've got some friends that were in Colorado, and they rented a car, mm -hmm. and they couldn't get something to work in the car. So she told her husband to open the glove box and get the directions out. Mm -hmm. When they opened the glove box, they found an ounce of pot in the glove box. This was from a rental car agency. Mm -hmm. sure. They had rented it. Sure. <laughs> Evidently, they didn't clean the glove box out that before they got the new car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I could see where somebody could get pulled over to a rental car and, <laughs> and fired up over something sure. like that. Let's take a break. And we'll be right back. You're listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson. We'll be right back after this. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. And you're listening to WOOPLP, Cleveland, Tennessee. Whoop FM is a broadcasting service of the Traditional Music Resource Center, and we play America's original music. Another SOS, and you're stressing, and that's the time to check in. I check in to cash, check in. When you have a cash emergency, you check in. We understand the urgency, a check in. To get your loans and more, you gotta check in with your check in to cash shop. Walk in, call in, click in, go all in. Check in to cash in, a check in to cash. Your one stop money shop. Check, 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 check in to cash. Yeah, you looking for something sweet? I know you are. 
Bring your little sweet self to the Village Bake Shop. Around since 1961, there ain't a bake good in the galaxy. The Village Bake Shop can't whip up for you. Bake shop. So when you're ready to treat your mouth to a taste you won't soon forget, get over to the Village, Village Bake, bake shop, shop in the Village Green Town Center. Or give them a call at 476-5179. You dig? Attention, Cleveland area creditors. Are you tired of dealing with debtors that owe you money? I'm Jeff Renfro, and I've owned and operated Financial Recovery, a debt recovery specialist here in my hometown of Cleveland for 18 years. We're a licensed and bonded Tennessee collection agency working for a wide variety of creditors from commercial, manufacturing, physicians, dentists, attorneys, small business owners to individuals. Look, any kind of business dealing with billing, charge accounts, or even return checks. I know your past due accounts are not a top priority for you, but they would be to me. Let me try to make it easy for you to make a change in the way you've been handling your accounts. There's no contract and no cost to you in most cases as our fee of only 30% can be added to the balance owed to you. So, whether you have hundreds of accounts monthly and need help with your billing and collection or you're just an individual and somebody owes you money, let me help you. Give me a call at 400-5376 and I'll come by and see you. That's 400-5376. Financial Recovery, a licensed and bonded collection agent in Cleveland, Tennessee, 400 Dr. Christopher Chase with Associates in Plastic Surgery now offers his patients the convenience of a Cleveland office at 2350 North Okoy Street. Dr. Chase specializes for the ladies in breast augmentation, including lifts, reconstructions, and reductions. Also, tummy tucks or mommy makeovers and facial rejuvenation, including facelifts, eyelids, brows, nose, and he also offers Botox procedures. Check out Dr. Christopher Chase. He is certified by the American American Board of Surgery, the American Board of Plastic Surgery. He's a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons and the American Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. Check their website out at APRS.MD. That's APRS.MD. Call for your convenient appointment in Cleveland at 624-0021. 624-0021. 2350 North Okoy. That's Dr. Christopher Chase. Jackson Catnapper, family owned and operated in Cleveland since 1933, offering the best with over 70 styles of recliners, sofas, electronic lift chairs, full living room packages. Call Mike now at 961-7239 because Jackson Catnapper now offers sales to the public every Saturday. That's right, every Saturday. From 8 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. Or call Mike at 961-7239. Or go see him every Saturday at 1911 King Edward Avenue, just across from the main plant. Jackson Catnapper, family owned and operated in Cleveland since 1933, 961-7239. No dealers allowed. You're listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson on Woof FM. Call 423-614. 5553 to join in on the conversation. Now, back to Backfire. Franklin, I've got to ask your opinion what you think, and I know what John's going to think, but in Seattle, overtaxing a, a system of tax to stem the homeless, to help the homeless. Wait a minute, don't just say it that way. It's $275 per employee on, <laughs> but, on corporations. Well, I was getting ready to say that, John. It's not, you know, people go, oh, you know, those companies can pay $275 per employee. But I hadn't heard about that one. Oh, you haven't? I had not. That's the latest. That's I think the latest it's race. absolutely wonderful because all those companies out there, the, the two top ones are Google and Starbucks. And They're Amazon. all good Amazon. liberal companies, so congratulations. You get your fill of liberal policies. 
I do think it is quite fascinating how much time John spends paying attention to the California coast. <laughs> well, I'm sitting here uh, looking at the, the Seattle over the tax to stem the homeless. Two hundred seventy-five. Well, it's one of the worst cities for for homeless uh, people congregating, apparently. Of course, they can't figure out that maybe that has something to do with their government policies on, on that. And Starbucks, actually, I don't have it in front of me. They issued, now that's a liberal corporation, they issued a really stinging comment that if you can't guarantee that a five-year-old gets breakfast every morning, how are you going to guarantee uh, shelter for the homeless? Uh, Amazon's looking for a second they're, headquarters. They're thinking about pulling out. What do you think, Franklin? Uh, Tax me or not? Well, I'm all for taxing you. That's usually the problem. It's always tax somebody else and not me, right? And then how it goes. Good morning, Charlotte Peake. She's Good in morning. the building. How are you this morning? Good, how are you? Good. Come on. Concrete uh, truck had you blocked in, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Muddy mess. She's a few minutes late, but that's all right. She's here. All right. Let me just tell you what it is, just so you'll know. Have a little representation. Franklin, I'm sure you're perfectly comfortable with this as a good liberal. Amazon, good liberal. Amazon with 45,000 workers will pay $12,375,000 per year under this tax. What is that, a dollar more for our? For I don't know what that'll cost us. $12 million a year for one company alone. But yeah, that won't influence business. That won't run corporations out of your city. Let's uh, let's do something that actually helps our re our listeners for a moment. Uh, there's a bunch of of road closures starting uh, tomorrow through the weekend, I think. All right, let's uh, take a break from showing the lunacy of the liberal left. Okay, go ahead. Well, this will be the Nor Norfolk Southern Railroad is closing the crossings beginning tomorrow, I think, through the weekend at Sheffy Lane, Tasso Lane, Old Tasso Road, Twentieth Street, Fifteenth Street, Eighth Street. Central Avenue, 3rd Street, and 9th Street. Does that mean no, no trains are coming? Well, I think it means no cars are going across it either during those period of time. <laughs> What's going on? Well, apparently they're doing upgrades to those crossings. But that's a lot on that line at one, in, in a three-day period. Why would you do all of those at one time? Well, apparently they are doing all those. I mean, programs. why would you do all of those at one time? To make a point to the city and the county that they can do what they wish to do because we complain so much about them closing roads without giving us notice. So we're going to give you notice. Well, we got we're notice going to close time. every one of them all at once. Yeah, they have been parking for days across the tracks on our end of town, south end. <sighs> No, that's government. You know, when you can't be fired, when you have no alternative, that well, all right, trains are not directly government, but they're quasi-government, just like the utility company. You know, I get that all the time. Well, the utility company's not government. Yes, it is. I knew this town was going to go to heck when the railroad came through. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just what you get when people don't have an alternative, when there's no consequence to, to... Now, Seattle, as we were talking about before you tried to divert us off liberal uh, craziness, <laughs> uh, Seattle will pay a price for this. Companies will leave Seattle, and they should leave Seattle. All right, let's... We've got Miss Charlotte Peak in here. Let's talk about taxes going up for the county. Are they going up? Well, I don't know. One of the commissioners said that it's going to have to go up, didn't he? He's one of 14. Oh, okay. Here's my take on it. We're, we're offering a balanced budget, and he wants to raise taxes. Now, he he showed that there were different needs that he thought. Who that, is, who is uh, he? Mr. Tom Cry. He expressed what needs he thought needed to be addressed, but he does not have a plan for when you do raise the taxes, where is it going? So if he wants to raise taxes, he needs to come up with a plan. What were his extra needs? I didn't even read it, to tell you the truth. All I, all I remember was uh, schools. He, he, that's his top priority. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. What, what is this deal about uh, the school system budgeted 400000 in in a tax uh, pot that they get revenue out of, and instead of 400000 they got a million, so they got 600000 extra? Where'd that 600000 go? No idea. I heard it first time Monday. As I understand it, they, the school system was asked where the six hundred thousand extra go since you budgeted four hundred, you got a million, and they couldn't really tell y'all where it went. 
I didn't hear an explanation. Well, it, it would have gone far towards the American Uniform Project, wouldn't it? That's about close to what they're asking for the sale of the school. Tell us what you think. Well, the appraisal three, was six, apparently four, eight ninety nine, I believe, and and I think they lowered their price to eight forty five. Who owns the uh, property there? Is that a county school property, or is that a county owned piece of property? That's another. Goal? That's a whole other discussion. The goal of we gave money towards it. So here, I, I, I spoke with Crystal Freiberg yesterday, and she told me that when you look at the deeds on this in Bradley County, it's sort of a hodgepodge. Some of them are, are deeded under Bradley County. Some of them are deeded schools. under Bradley County Schools. That one apparently is deeded under Bradley County Schools. So that's why. But answered. the problem with that is that the contention is that the school system owns all the schools. But if you look at the deeds, that's not how the deeds actually read. And that would kind of lead you to believe that that's not as settled of an issue as, as well, the school system might like. a lot like. of those older county mm -hmm. school buildings were property owned and purchased by the county itself. Right. And then I don't know if they were ever deeded formally to the school, the school. system in any way. Yeah, but the, pro the point, though, Franklin, is, you know, from a practical level, that's the problem. This is an esoteric, legalistic conversation because the commission passes a resolution to give them the money that they then turn around and use. Now, they get money from the state. They get much, Actually, they get very little federal dollars, amazingly, for the control the feds want. But it's all taxpayer dollars. Whether it's the state money or the county money, it still belongs to the people. It's another one of those silly arguments of, well, no, this is our asset. It's not your asset. No, it's all the people's well, asset. <laughs> this takes you back to one of my uh, axes to grind, with, I, which I keep suggesting uh, I don't know what Charlie thinks about this but I've always as I've said before felt that uh, the taxing authority for the school system ought to be directly with the school board so that they can't blame the county commission and the county commission can't blame them well but I will say uh, in a public and the voters opinion, can decide if they think the, the the school board is making a good decision or not when well, I don't necessarily disagree it scares the, the the daylights out of me for the school system to have uh, taxing authority, but I will tell you that they were hammering the commission when Lisa was on there, and uh, at one point in a public meeting, she said, fine, I'll be glad to pass a resolution asking the state to uh, give you all taxing authority, and they backed off that real fast. As long as I can remember, the discussions have been, well, the county commission decides the tax rate and how much money we get, and the county commission has said, you know, the, the school board is not being good stewards of the money. I don't mean specifically right now, but at various times during this. And the voters have to try to sort through which of those is actually a true statement. It just seems to me direct accountability would be the best approach. And, and let me, in, in the interest of being fair, let me say that, that I, I have gotten somebody that, that uh, gave me a little information that perhaps with the 600000 that line was over in the taxes, but there were uh, some other taxes that were under collected, and so it may have zeroed itself out, and that, it may have. But it still bothers me that in a commission meeting you ask the question, and they can't tell you that. They said there was something estimated that was way under something from the property tax. I don't recall all of it. Charlotte, it was let a me, long meeting. Let me ask you: um, when a property, a property like that that that's been a, a county school system. When it's being sold, should that revert back to the county? The money generated from that back to the county? Most of the time, the county has bought the property, or 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 most of the time, the county's been involved in raising the money. Taxpayer dollars, <laughs> either way. I don't know what I, how I feel on that one. I, I mean, mean, if they're selling the piece of property to purchase a new school or to go towards the reduction of debt on another school. I mean, that, that runs either into way, the, we have to the, give the it question has always been, who's in charge of this? You know, the, the commission looks and says, you're asking for money. We don't like this project. The school board says it's none of your business what the project is. We're the school board. And I'm kind of odd on that. I, I don't know if I'd support that or not either. Like Charlotte said, if they're using it, they're in charge of the schools. And, and you have to trust that, 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 that they're trying to do the best job they can. <laughs> And they are. I'm sure they are. Why aren't they putting this out for bid then? 
Now, that's a whole different question. I don't know. Putting what out for bid? This, this, uh, this school that's being sold. Well, if they want to get the most money they can get. Goal Academy? Yeah, yeah. Goal Academy. Why I, just don't, I just think this is misguided, doing it this way. We are looking into the legalities of that to make sure that... Uh, I think they've got two different attorney opinions right now that says they can without bidding it out, that they have the authority to do a direct sale. And then we have another attorney that says they can't. So I think we're waiting on a an, a third authority to tell us. I'm not sure. Well, Charlotte, I don't know if you heard earlier, but apparently I, I was reading a piece from CTAS on this. And they said that it's different if you're not managed under the Financial Management Act of 1981, which Bradley County is not. And so I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. Because you all are not, apparently you're not exactly under the 57 Act. You have a private act that sort of incorporates that. But the way I read that, that statute, if you're not under 1981, the 2006 uh, law, and that's not the date, that's the number, uh, does not apply. And that's the law that they're hanging this on, that they didn't have to do a newspaper notice. They didn't. They could use a realtor. They could do a private sale. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but I'm not an attorney. <laughs> well, Charlotte, since we have you here, um, First of all, congratulations on your your oh, yeah. re-election. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Congratulations. I don't think you have any opposition at this point, correct? I did have opposition, but no, no I, I don't move you forward, no. Okay. Uh, okay. So what what do you think are the biggest priorities for the for the uh, uh, commission moving forward uh, this next term? Um, new revenue sources and infrastructure. Okay. So what what new revenue sources do you think we ought to be considering? I think there's a couple options out there right now. Um, I know Tom Cry wants to raise taxes. I would not be for a tax increase unless they did a study like the city did, go in, out into the community, ask them what their needs are, ask them if they really want a tax increase. Um, I was thinking a lot of them ask about the wheel tax. Why can't you do the wheel tax? Uh, Tom Cry put some misinformation out there. I don't think he did it purposely, but he mentioned that he would uh, raise the firemen's salaries. That can't be done unless you raise the fire tax. That has to be funded through the fire tax. Uh, so I guess uh, hopefully with new eyes we can try to find new revenue sources. If not, we have tons of building going on too, by the way, and we are 800 homes right now short in Bradley County in the city of Cleveland. So with more building, we'll get more tax revenue. That's how we also... Um, afford to give a 2% increase across the board every year. And the infrastructure sewer, I want, we, we've got to come up with something on sewer. We had people in there Monday that live on Spring Place Road that their field lines and their septic tanks, they have to pump them yearly. Well, we are growing into well, now, well, now let let me get, really Let's get into that a little bit, too, because. Heavier septic use. Right? right, exactly. Those people are in between a rock and a hard place because a lot of their problem is flooding. Mm -hmm. The flooding backs their system up, and then the city or the or the utility company penalizes them. Actually, can come out and mm -hmm. find them. Well, for, they're in the county, so the state is finding finding them for overflow. Yeah, the state but it's, is. It's a flooding that. issue, not not a. It's well, not that they're not because, maintaining but their. But they're in areas where the ground doesn't perk well enough to support the usage in that area. Correct, and these systems were put in pre nineteen sixty, so you don't know what kind of system they had, but they're function. They were functioning. And now they're not functioning. Yeah, so, what caused them not to function? Uh, flooding right. and yeah, you, you, the grounds are saturated. So, but 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 think about that. You you have your home and and it's it's built in 1960, and you've not done anything wrong. And the flooding comes, and your your septic system backs up, and then the state comes in and finds you for that. Well, and then you had areas though where you had your home and a septic system, and the next home was. 500 yards away, and now there's 11 homes between you and there, and they're all on septic systems at that but point. Spring places. So it's creating a more significant problem. When you had a, a septic system that, that overflowed and it was one every quarter of a mile, not such a big deal. When you have a much higher population in there and all those systems are overflowing, it becomes an issue for what's going into the streams. Where's this happening again, Charlotte? It's off Pickens. I think it's close to where Fred's was going to go, and I'm not sure. I thought that 
the city was going to allow Fred's to tap on because of the sewer is right there in front of it. Uh, but I heard that it's on septic, so I don't know. But this guy said he could throw a rock at the city limits. And so we've got to get an interlocal agreement with Cleveland Utilities or do something. But they do have a one-mile radius service area that we can't touch. So if we could get an interlocal agreement with them and make them maintain that one But, but what does that mean? Service if area? they've got a one-mile radius, these people are inside that one-mile radius. They should be servicing them. Well, I understood that they made an offer, but the offer was $20,000 a house. Yeah, that's what the guy said. Just unbelievable. I guess we just need to get in there and see if we can't work with the city of Cleveland and Cleveland Utilities and come up with some immediate well, solution I mean, what, for what these the people. What is the point of the one-mile radius? I, I don't know. I haven't understood that. I mean, if you're not going to offer service in the one-mile radius, but, but the radius says we can't come in and do anything in that radius, does that just leave the people in limbo? I think so. Okoy Utilities can't come past Jackie Evans. Jackie Evans and the Dollar General and all that area on 64 Highway desperately need sewer. But, but there's sewer out there because the school, y'all put a 13-inch line going over to the uh, uh, Whirlpool plant. Mm -hmm. So there's there's sewer beyond them, correct? Yes. But they can't tap onto it. Correct. That doesn't make any sense, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, is anybody right now, is anybody right now designated or tasked with the function of trying to negotiate this issue, or is it just sort of floundering out there? Right it's now? floundering, but I've taken it up as one of my tasks. And uh, I asked Jeff Yarber the other day on the commission on Monday to help me see if we could not reach out to Clean Utilities to get these folks some immediate. But for the county to develop it, I still don't think anybody will benefit seven to ten years down the road. Now, OCO Utilities is expanding as we speak. Well, that would be a significant investment for the county. Can we agree on that if they were going to undertake it themselves? Well, Hamilton County did it 20 years ago without a tax increase to their uh, citizens whatsoever. And uh, Dennis Epperson is coming on board, and he's been researching this for a year or two. Um, we did have a ad hoc committee that was designated to go out and just find different systems. Uh, Lake Mantooth's on that, I think, and some other Tom Cry may have been on that. But anyway, we've been researching it, and hopefully this year with extra help, we can get in there and get something now done. Is that in the city? What in the city? Well, you said the new school out there, you said there was sewer out there, and it goes over to the Whirlpool. No, right. that's county. That's I county. Mean, that's right. County property, right? Mm -hmm. right? How far is the city limit from there? Half a mile. See, the re they were going to put a six-inch uh, sewer well, pipe in, and... and Again, Lisa actually fought for this to get a 13-inch pipe so that it would it would service more out mm -hmm. there. So the whole point of the 13-inch pipe was to be able to service more. And that was an agreement between the county and the city. So I don't understand why they wouldn't let people out there tap onto that. It costs because money. they can't annex because of the forced annexation law. But they still would get the revenue from, from service to those homes and businesses. Well, I agree. It comes I, well, up behind the firewall. And, and by the way, with stopped. the people on Spring Place, didn't Commissioner Garber, aren't they in his district? Didn't yes. he? He's championed them pretty good, hasn't yes, he? Yes, he is. He's doing a good job. Uh, you said that they, the city can't annex the, that area. Correct. You can't do forced annexation anymore. Has well, to go to a ballot. What has to happen to get that done? They could so request they could the annexation, city. but Cleveland Utilities still has eight years to offer sewer to anybody that and has the, to be the, annexed. The, the, in the past, at least, the experience of a lot of these communities is it's not only eight years, it's longer than eight years. So, so you pay the taxes, but you don't get the service. So there is a problem with the sewer, so what's the, what's the, what's the fix? I don't know. We're going to find out. Hmm. Charlotte, did you have something else you wanted to talk about? Yes. Let's uh, talk about it. Santec. Oh, yeah. I don't want to come down too hard on them, but... Um, Why not? $7 to $20. That's a 300% increase. Uh, tell, tell our listeners who don't know what you're talking about, uh, what specifically is being increased. I have an article on it, and I can't find it. Uh, Santec increased their dump minimum dump fee May the 1st from $7 a load to $20 a load. It's under a ton. How can they, let me ask you, how can they do that? Are they not under a contract? They're under a contract with Bradley County. We own the property. They lease it from us. But right. they still can operate their business as they see yeah, this is, fit. This, this and, is private individuals yes. bringing things to them. And they can implement any fees that they wish to implement, raise their fees. And weren't they asked about, if they're operating in the red or the black yesterday or at the commission meeting? Yes. What was the answer? They're operating 
in the black. The black, yes. They, so they're they have profitable. Profits. It's so, just they're saying that their minimum dump fee is not profitable. But if you're profitable, you're profitable. How do you know that those minimum dump fees are too low or well, too high? Well, actually, this is probably a contagious disease because they use the same logic that the city used when they raised because our tax at 28 percent. They did a survey and they were the low man in the area, and so they wanted to raise it to be more in in line with everyone around them. Well. The county could certainly operate its own dump if it wanted to. Yeah, but let it? me ask you a question. Here's You've the cho problem. They've chosen not to. No, but here's the problem with that logic. If we raise ours because of that and a couple others raise theirs because of that, then everybody's goes up, and then a few years later, you're still the low man. So that that's a never-ending proposition. Uh, uh, well, yes, it would end. It would end when you have sucked the taxpayer dry. I understand increases. I have increases in my business, but I don't, I don't raise it 300% at one time. That's my problem. Is well, it just if you own a bunch of rental property and you got hit by the city taxes, you I might did. have to. I well, did, you but I did not. You actually can't. I could not. <laughs> but not the, law, the law... Uh, you, you mean you didn't get to collect all the taxes you <laughs> Well, on top of the no. fact that that, 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 that tax increase was retroactive. So you'd already collected the taxes or the for rent for months. that year. Nine months. But yet you had to pay the increased tax on it. We only got three months that we, we have to give a 30-day notice for a rent increase, only if they're out of their year lease agreement. Right. And then you could only increase a certain percentage of the rent per year. So that we're limited on how much you can raise rent. Per year. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah. But anyway, the biggest issue with Santec that I have right now is that they are also implementing a $10 no tarp fee. So if you come in there and your load's not tarped, they are hitting you with a $10 Fine. But the the explanation was because it's against the law. So they said they are the enforcing state law. So you can't enforce a state law and put the $10 in your own budget or in your own coffers. So the majority of the people that I've talked to when they come through, they just already assumed that, hey, this is a state law. They're implementing and enforcing the state law, and they're collecting the 10 bucks. Now, wait a minute. The county gets a dollar of that, don't they? So? That doesn't make it right. So if why, we're getting a dollar why, of it, I'm saying why would we the don't want it. Let them do anything for a dollar. We can't. We we can't. We don't have the authority to let them do anything. But I'm telling you right now that this is not legal. It cannot be legal. You took away somebody's due process, Chancy. Am I right? When you get pulled over on the side of the road, there's a speed limit sign. We well, are warned. I think that as part of the contract between the county and Santec, you could address this. As it presently stands, I don't know that there's any legal impediment to them doing this. Here, here's the problem. I, uh, Charlotte, I, I, I was speaking with someone yesterday. I actually think they can do it. I just think that the way they presented it was wrong. What they should have said was, we're going to charge you $10 for having no tarp on our property. And they can do that. They they presented it. I think they were trying to make it seem more legitimate by going, oh, this is state law. And it made people feel like, what, you're now a private police force mm -hmm. that's enforcing state law? Well, they do have a sign up. But here's my pro problem with it, is that we have signs up on the side of the road. If I get pulled over for breaking the law, I get a ticket. And when I get that ticket, I can either pay it or I can go to court. I have the due process. And I can decide. When I get there, it says you have a warning sign, but still you break it. When you leave, you have to hand them the $10. I don't hand a police officer $10 hand, hand whenever a, I get pulled over. Hand them a credit card and see what happens. They take them. Well, if their machine's working that day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but my point is, they take away my due process. If I want to break the state law, I can break the state law. But, but I they still can have also process. implement any fee that they really want on their property. True. I just think they presented I, I, that. But I think it's a fine, not no, a let, fee. Let, let, me, let, me say, let, me, let me change the subject just a second. <laughs> just, I want to stay on the that, subject. That, that, that's like a permit is a fee, not a tax, right? <laughs> well, it is. I, I don't disagree. It's, our landfill is now the highest mountain that we have in Bradley County, am I it right? It is. No, I don't know. I haven't been by there. It's well, the tallest point. It's the tallest point in Bradley County now. How high is this thing going to go? I don't know. We still have is 20 years left on it. there where the Epperson car point. dealership is? Yeah. The tallest point. We yeah. still have 20 years left on it. That's all I keep getting told. Yeah. So 20 years. What happens at the end of 20? You I find some new, property, some new property or you but send it somewhere else. Let me address one thing, though. I heard that one of the commissioners made the comment, well, it's only $20. And that is such a misguided 
comment to make because if you're in a business, for example, the business you're in where you're demolishing property and rebuilding and things and you're regularly taking things down, it's a 300% increase in one of your costs. Mm -hmm. So that, that is just such a simplistic when and unfair statement. May 1st. May 1st. It's already in, it's oh, already it's in already effect. In so to, to say, oh, it's only twenty dollars. Yeah, it's only twenty dollars every time I go out there. And the only notice we got was a little flyer out the window during the two weeks prior. They said it was out thirty days, but I got one two weeks prior, and that was the only time I got one. So, and there was not a notice in the paper. Usually, we get a thirty-day notice of huge increases at the dump, but we we got nothing. Well, somehow <laughs> we've uh, gone through an hour here. And uh, it went pretty quick. And let me say something. I don't think we've had anybody yell or scream today. And we haven't talked about what a great job Donald Trump has done this week. Or what a disaster it's been. So. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, earning a Nobel Peace Prize will be a complete disaster for <laughs> yeah, the that, Democrat that Party. It went really well last night, didn't it? <laughs> what? I was just bragging on how we haven't uh, talked about anything. What about the North Korea threatening to scrap the Trump meeting? Yeah, that's, that's all part of, out of his, his, their meeting with the South, South Koreans. Koreans. But that's you all think, part You think it. he's going to come get those hostages? <laughs> so what? <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Charlotte, Pete, why don't you come back and see us anytime. You're always welcome. I'll do it. Thank you. Uh, You've been listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson, John Stanberry, and Franklin Chansey. Catch them again on Whoop FM at noon today.